break I'm here to show you how I made this prop uh, the arm centipede from the thing so these are the materials that I'm using uh, I got the glue gun the chopsticks yet there's a PVC pipe in there some super glue gotta have those exacto blades that flashlight and this cool gory parts collection arm which is not too bad hey seven bucks that was actually a pretty good price and paying for that item so here we got these chopsticks. I uh, already had pre-drilled the holes here in the PVC pipe and I'm just checking the fitting here. So definitely want to make these chopsticks to be mm, a little bit larger than uh, the diameter of the chopsticks so then that way it'll fit snugly into the hole there. So we're going to be flipping the chopstick around and cutting the other end with an X-Acto blade. We're going to shave it a little bit and use the super glue to hold it in place once we're ready. So we're going to try to get this piece to go inside the arm, we want it down close to the wrist and the hand. So we're going to have to go ahead and take this uh, gory arm parts out of the bag, and we need to remove the back end of it, which is where you see the protruding bone part. That is actually like a little cap there that has been glued in place. So basically, you're just going to be separating that cap uh, from the rest of the skin there. Uh, just take your time. You do want to save and you don't want to end up tearing the, the arm in that area, uh, but you can uh, repair it. I did on, on this arm, there was a tear, but I was able to repair it with some hot glue I was, as I was mending it together uh, with the Eva foam piece that's supposed to go on that end. So take your time, get it peeled off, get the cap off, and then you know clean it off because then again you could take that and you could probably end up using it for another project that you might have for something else uh, that you might be creating. So as for me, I, I just cleaned it up and threw it off to the side. But yeah, you can either keep it or you can just throw it away. It's up to you. So here we go. We're gonna take the stuffing out of the arm, get it all the way down to where the wrist is at, and the hand. This is very important because you want it clear so that way you can fit that PVC pipe. So now we're going to check for a good fit. I want to make sure that it reaches down where I want. And I did want some of that PVC pipe at B, to be at the very end of the arm. So this, this part actually turned out rather well. I'm actually kind of pleased with this. So we're good to go. Man, it's great when things turn out. So now we need to go on to the next step. And this is where you're going to be util utilizing the hot glue gun and the chopsticks and super glue. Now, with that super glue, you might want to have a, a few of them. I think I had a total of five different tubes of the super glue. And just be careful because that super glue, yeah, it can get all over. It can your skin, everything. So be very uh, careful and diligent when you're working with it and putting the, putting on the chopsticks. So we'll be using this and the chopsticks, and we will be fitting them into the pre-hole drills that are in the PVC pipe. So here again, see, you can, you can stick it in that way if you wanted to, but um, it's, it's your choice. Me, I'd rather flip them around and use the other ends because I'm going to end up cutting the pieces into three or four, uh, depending on how I want the legs to look. So that's the next thing is checking it. We're going to be setting it inside and we need to make sure that we can find the holes and insert the chopsticks. Alright, so word of caution, do have a sharp blade here, so be very careful. We're going to go ahead and shave a little bit of each corner on the end there, so there's four little corners. Shave it down, you want to give it a, almost kind of a round shape as you're doing it. So we're going to go ahead and check it, see if we're going to get a fit in here, if it's going to go inside the hole. It does, cool, but I did notice that it's a little short, so we are going to go ahead and shave it some more, just a little bit longer. We definitely want some length that's going inside there, so we're just going to get that corner shaved off. And look how I'm shaving this. I'm shaving it away from me, and this is a good safety reason, because when you're shaving these, you want it to be the blade cutting away from you, away from you, see, away. So be safe and nice and smooth. There we go. So now we're going to go ahead, and we need to check the fit on these. And it takes, you know, just a few seconds just to double check. And you want to do this to every leg that you're going to have. So, yep, yeah, nice, tight fit. 
cool. So we'll have to do the rest of the legs the same way and then we'll end up cutting the ends but you can notice where my thumb is at. That length will be inside the pipe and then we're going to cut it right about there. So for example you're going to see that you're going to be gluing together two chopsticks basically in a way. Alright, so I have my LED flashlight right here. I'm going to go ahead and put it in the PVC pipe and I'm going to be lining up the holes to where I want to perforate them and then to insert the chopsticks. Now this uh, does work out rather well. You can't see it too well, but I will put the camera in a low light so you can see what I'm talking about. But the holes are right there. I can see them real nice and easy. So right here, here's the example I was saying and it's just highlighted a little bit easier for you to see that way you can line it up and be able to glue your chopsticks straight in there once you make sure that the chopsticks will fit properly and you're going to be gluing these in place make sure you push them in firmly so here i am inserting the wool stuffing and hey i'm just using chopsticks to get it down to the wrist over here then i would be putting it uh, throughout the entire arm so that way i get a nice uh, full arm form and it's a solid fit that uh, holds the PVC pipe in place as well. Now just make sure I just have it all the way up, all the way around the top. So right here you can see I have this uh, arm stuffed rather well. And now I'm going to go ahead and use the X-Acto blade, perforate the hole. And that way I can get the chopstick inserted. I will do this to both sides of the arm and be double checking all the chopsticks that I have as I insert them before I glue them. Because you want to make sure that there's a, a good fit in there and there's enough uh, chopstick inside there for when you glue it it will stay in a hold firm and won't come out now you want to check each of the legs that you're going to be inserting you'll definitely be using the super glue to keep it in place and definitely like I said once you've placed some of that super glue on the end right there you need to hurry up and push it through real firmly and then hold it for a little bit that way it will adhere to it and here's the end result I had inserted uh, each of the chopsticks, glued them in, and then double checked them to make sure. Now I will be cutting these ends out uh, to the length that I want them at for the legs. And at this time, I'm just going to go ahead and use some wire snips. And these are not too bad in cutting it. There's other ways you can cut it. You can get an X-Acto blade. You can use, um, you know, a little hole saw if you want. It's just up to you, even a Dremel. But uh, here I'm just going to use the wire snips and cut through these. Uh, pretty easily and then continue on because I have to do different sections of it as well. So after cutting three sections this is how far I've gotten on each of these legs here and I put them differently because the way I'm going to give the look of the legs. The makeup of the legs is up to you how you're going to do it and how many sections you'll have so the pieces that you glue you know one, two, or even one, two, three or you can even do four. It's up to you. So for some added help here in cementing these down in place, I'm going to go ahead and put some hot glue in this area. I'm going to try and just make sure it's uh, you know very minimal, uh, not, not a whole lot, I'm not going to goop it on there, but definitely enough so that way it's uh, the chopstick and the rubber skin here is sticking together to be one piece before I go ahead and cover it with the foam clay, which is actually really cool. That foam clay is really awesome. 20 bucks for a little tub works really great. But you want to go ahead and do all of the chopsticks on both sides and get those done and ready to go for your next step, which we will get in the Eva foam. And I basically just cut out a square, got it ready, and then we'll be gluing it to the other end of this arm here.
this is one set of legs that have been completed glued down. Let me clear this out here and I'll be checking the rigidity of the legs to ensure that they're strong enough. They are three sections but I might make them uh, four section legs because I think they need to be a little bit longer but at this point this is where you make the determination where you want it to go, how, how long the legs you want them to be. And this is where you're going to be looking at how you're going to change stuff or how you want it to look for yourself. It's whichever you decide to do. And this is what they turned out to look like right now. This is really great. And they're very strong legs. I like them. They hold the prop up rather well. Alright, so I'm going to show you what we're going to be doing next. We're going to be taking the hot glue, we're going to be putting it on the PVC pipe, and then we will be placing the EVA foam piece on top of it. So you would put some here, make sure you got a good amount, you could put it on the outer edge after you get the PVC pipe done first. And the EVA foam just places right on there nicely, hold it firmly for a few seconds. Alright, now we'll get the hot glue on the PVC pipe, and we will go ahead and grab our EVA foam. And then you'll get that EVA foam piece and put it in place. That way it will stay in it here, but hold it for about a minute. Then we'll do the outside rim of the arm. That way that it will hold all together, bond together nice and strong. So you can see here, this is where we need to glue. So we'll get the hot glue. Lay down a section, maybe two, three inches worth of hot glue, and then we'll hold it in place and we'll wait a bit or two so that it cools down and adheres well. I usually check it as I go along, so I will hold that in place, then I will check that edge, then I will get some more glue and continue on. And you just want to make sure that you got the whole thing all the way around sealed and held together. Just remember the foam clay dries in 24 to 48 hours, so it's easy to work with when you are making your legs. Here's the chopstick. I'll be using the foam clay just to show you an example of how I was able to wrap it around the legs while it was uh, connected to the prop. Now this stuff is real easy to work with. Just remember, like I said, when you take some out, you reseal that bag. But uh, when you're getting it out of the bag, it's going to be a little, might feel a little damp, and it is a little squishy and a little sticky at times. But, you know, hey, I'll just roll this stuff up, and I will just take it and wrap it around the chopstick, and then seal the ends. And you're basically looking at making like a crab leg out of it as you're doing each leg on your prop to give it that look. And then you can add some water to your hands and you can smooth out these edges and that way you can have a nice smooth um, body form on it and you can shape it rather well. And it works really good, like I said, it takes 24 hours, but the only issue you're going to run into if you're making long arms, long tentacles, long teeth or something like that is you're going to have to have some kind of uh, base for it to be on. Uh, for the teeth, some of them I laid them on the table and I kept flipping them over so that way they wouldn't be too flat. And then also for like um, uh, antennae or the long arms that were on there, I had to use... Uh, barbecue skewers to hold them up in place where I want them to be and allow them to dry because if you just try to let it hang there uh, it's just going to fall down or it's just going to droop or it's going to deform so really think this stuff out so that's why I used the uh, EVA foam to spread it out on the EVA foam and it stuck to the EVA foam and you know I smoothed it out and pressed it into the EVA foam and you can also wet it if you need to and do it that way but I just found it a lot easier just to put it on there dry and then do the water afterwards just to bond all the edges or blend all the edges as I was adding foam to it. So that's pretty much it. Add some water to it and you know hey you can get the look you want or if you mess up you can take this off but it does take some work. It's like a really sticky uh, marshmallow. There you go. <laughs> 
but you're, you're able, you should be able to get it off of the wood. I was able to get it off of here, it just took some work. But as you can see, uh, with a little bit of effort, you can get this foam right off of there, the foam clay, and it even sticks to itself, so I was kind of like using it in that way. And then, of course, you know, you might have to use your nails or maybe a plastic uh, knife in order to help you get it off of the chopstick itself. paid off I was able to get all that off of there which is really great for 20 bucks this stuff is really awesome and works really good for this type of project all right just a quick example I just used this chopstick to hold the item up in a position if I was trying to make it stand and it works rather well that's all you need is some kind of backing to support it So here I started covering the edges of that Eva foam with some of the foam clay and then I will be starting on these legs here. So here is one section of legs that were completed. I might go back in and touch up in certain areas, add a little bit of foam to it, but I made sure at the ends I had flattened it out and blended it well to the skin of the arm. And then if you take a look, I started working on the front part of the arm here and making the tentacles and then started covering where I bonded pieces together. But it's starting to turn out rather well. And those bamboo skewers work rather well in holding those tentacles up. I did make some teeth and they're dry and I will be gluing those on and I'll show you what it looks like after I glue them onto the prop itself. And now this is what it looks like after putting all of that clay foam where I needed it to be on the pieces of Eva foam forming the tentacles, the teeth, the legs, even the little stinger on the back on the fingers. This is pretty much what it's going to look like and you need to let it dry for at least two days. That's what I'm going to give it so that way it's all nice and dried out when I start to paint this prop here. Now this was my first base coat and it was using a mixture of latex paint, uh, RD407 latex, and water. Now this was the second coat and I brushed it on. Just wanted to let you guys see it before you see the rest of the work. I will be doing the rest of the detailed work, uh, different colors that need to be added in there, and skin tone texture. Now I finished all the detailed painting, I let it dry, and now it's ready for the Plasti Dip glossified coat that I'm going to put on here and that stuff is awesome. Works really great on everything, any kind of project to keep the paint on there protected because of all that hard work that you, you've done to your little project. So there it is, that's the can, that's what I used. And here is the final result. Wow, this turned out really great. Definitely a, a long project, but not too bad. Hey, a few hours of work and dedication into it got it done over time because of the fact that the foam clay has to dry at certain uh, times of the process and what you're trying to do here. But I actually like the coloring that I did with it. I did airbrush, but I did use uh, paint brushes in the very beginning. Very important, you know, to use different forms in putting this together to make a nice little prop that you can have uh, for your little setup and scaring people or making a scene for Halloween look really cool so I wish you uh, good luck on your project and trying to complete this and I need to show you the black light painting that I did on this and this turned out awesome for me really great uh, the, it pops out really well I mean the camera doesn't do it any justice I had to actually add in another LED light on the side here because it was like making it blue now I do want to show you a lower light setting that I have and it'll uh, 
show you the colors, how it's going to pop out when it's darker outside, but the LED black lights will be hitting on this and make it brighter. Right now I'm using a fluorescent uh, black light just to show you on, on the video here. Cutting to a next scene here in a little bit and you'll see it, it's a little bit darker just to see the back end of the paint here on the prop actually pops out in a darker low light setting. And I have a little secret here I added into the very first prop that you just saw was this little dog toy which is hilarious <laughs> but I like it, it's not too bad. It reacts to sound and movement. Surprise! This is some bonus footage of the other arm centipede that I am working on right now. It uh, is a little bit different from the first one, and it doesn't have the little dog toy in it either. But I did bring a lot of uh, detail into it. I wanted teeth, I wanted to look vicious, and this is where I'm at so far. I don't know what I'm going to do with the other end of the arm, part of the hand. But I'll show you guys in the next video what it looks like when I'm done and completed with it. Well, I hope you liked the video. Good luck on your project. Like and subscribe, and I'll see you on the next one. Thank you very much.